Hello guys and welcome to Program Artist. Today we will talk about the producer-consumer design pattern. Imagine to yourself that you have an ordering application, but your part of the ordering application is after the order has been registered and paid for. What is left to be done is the ordered items must be retrieved. The ordered items must be put inside the order box. The order box must be packaged. The destination of the order must be put on the box. And finally, the order must be sent. We can clearly see there is a pipeline of things that need to happen for the order to be sent. Each step in the pipeline is feeding the next step and each step in the pipeline is fed by the previous step. So for example, the packaging state is feeding the address putting state and the sending state is fed by the same step as the address putting step. So each step is feeding the next step and is fed by the previous step. In other words, each step produces work for the next step and consumes work from the previous step. Now we can create a class or a module or even a service, a process that is responsible for every single step in the pipeline and we can put a queue of tasks, of work items, between each and every worker. Meaning that every worker will produce work to that queue and every worker will consume the work from the queue. The queue itself may be inside the worker itself, inside the class or inside the process, or maybe a the different and a separate process or a class. Meaning that this queue, like for this example, this queue might sit inside this worker, the packaging worker, or might, might sit in a different process, even a process containing all of these queues uh, with a different technology, like for example, RabbitMQ or Kafka. We can even put more workers or more threads at different steps in the process. For example, if every step of the process takes one second, then if we put one item, it will be out in five seconds. And if you put uh, one item when every single process takes for two seconds, it will take single item to go through this entire queue, through this entire pipeline, to get uh, to the next side, it will take 10 seconds. But if, for example, each and every step in the process takes one second, but this process, the second one, takes two seconds. If we put an item every second, what will happen is this queue will be blown up. Because every second this queue gets an item, but only every two seconds an item is pulled from this queue. So in order to, to be able to maintain with the, with the speed of items that are fed in this queue, we need to put two workers here. And when we do this, every two seconds, each of the workers handles one item, meaning that an average consumption of this, of this process, of this work, is an item every second. So if we put two workers over here and one worker in every other station, we will be able to maintain this one second uh, for station uh, general time and we will be able to put an item of work for every second and every second an item of work will be, an order will be sent to the customer. With this same logic we can monitor the queues and if they have too many items we can spin up more workers of that queue, of the queue with the problem, spin up the more workers and drain the queue of the work and when it gets too low, like for example no items at all, we can remove workers until we get a, a consistent rate of items. This will make sure that we will be able to handle heavy loads, heavy bursts of loads quickly without wasting too much money and too much effort uh, into uh, maintaining many workers when there is no need to do that. The wiring of all this pipeline may be done by the workers themselves, like for example 
The packaging worker may know that the labeling worker is after him or by some kind of uh, orchestrating uh, module or class or configuration that sets the queue to listen to for every worker and listens to the finished event of the worker and puts the next job to the next queue in the line. By doing so, this also enables handling more complex uh, orchestration and pipelines. Like for example, if the packaging module, the packaging worker, is reporting on an error, he failed to package the package itself, uh, the orchestrating thingy may consider this a very bad error it may notify some monitoring service and someone to handle it or it may try to repackage the same package or even in the worst case it will notify the user that the order has failed will return his money and will ask the user to please uh, forgive us and if he wants he will order the same order again by creating these separate things Either they are classes or modules or even processes, it is much easier to test each and every step in the process. You may look only on the single step in the process, for example the packaging step, and you may test it to see how it handles different sorts of things. You may unit test it, you may integrate test it, and uh, after this thingy is done, you can do the same thing for each and every step in the process and after that you may create a single or multiple or even three tests like not a lot of tests will be needed to make sure that all the pipeline works probably you will need a one happy path for the order that will be given in this side and will be expected to go outside from this side and maybe a one single test edge case for failure uh, knowing that all the orchestration of all this process is done properly and if every step in the process fails some kind of logic is done and is done properly and mainly mainly what you're testing is the wiring logic and not every edge case of this step so if you have some kind of problem that requires a solution with multiple steps, sequential multiple steps, consider this pattern, this producer-consumer pattern, and it may be a synchronous pattern, maybe asynchronous pattern, it may be done within a single process, it may be done single-threaded, multiple-threaded, or even in multiple processes, and it is a very, very powerful pattern. So again, if you have some kind of problem that requires multiple steps, Sequential steps, consider the producer-consumer pattern. You have watched an episode about the producer-consumer design pattern. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more design patterns videos by clicking over here, or you can trust YouTube to know what you really want to see and click over here. If you want to watch more design pattern videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on Program Artist.